God bless all my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. This message today is important because it's speaking directly on what we see today and what we see that's taking place and what is portrayed to be Christianity today. Okay? But remember, the devil who named before was Lucifer was in heaven. So he was around God. He knows God, right? He's seen the power. So the only true threat to the devil is the power of God and the word of God, right? And he has already been judged. So the devil doesn't want anybody to make it into glory. He doesn't want anybody to receive salvation. He doesn't want anybody to live the life that he will never have, right? He wants everyone to perish. He wants everyone to go to hell. He wants everyone to, to perish the way he is, right? So um, we know that Satan will never allow, you know, the word of God to just, you know, reign without any, you know, resistance, without any fight, without any, you know, um, you know, persecution and, you know, falsehood and all those different things. You know, it's too powerful. You know, it's like the, the, the world, how they got military powers, you know. Every, either people are alliances, they're part of the, you know, they join together or they become enemies, whatever the case may be. So righteousness is a threat to unrighteousness because it taps into people's conscience. So righteously, right, even people that find pleasure in sin, a lot of people still do it with the mind frame of they're working on themselves or they're doing better or they, they're trying to, you know, become better or... You know, they don't mean to do such things. You know, even people that get convicted of murders and rapings and you see them in the courtrooms, you know, they always be like, if I can go back and talk to the person or, you know, they try to justify why they did it, whatever the case may be, because righteousness always will prevail over unrighteousness because it's in our DNA. People just choose to be unrighteously. But our conscience that's in us, that was given to us from God, all human beings on this earth comes from righteousness. So Satan knows that. That's why he doesn't tell people, hey, I'm inside of you. I'm the one causing you to masturbate. I'm the one causing you to fornicate. I'm the one causing you to be fearful. I'm the one causing these sicknesses inside of you. I'm the one that's making you have these dreams. I'm the one that's making your relationships not work out. I got demons in you and I got demons in the woman that you're with. And I can make it to where y'all won't be attractive anymore. Or your penis won't get erect. Or her vagina won't, you know... Uh, produce moisture to for you to be able to have a, a easy you know um, easy access you know the demons have power to do these things so he keeps these things from the world but it's our job as believers to reveal these things and to speak on these things that's the whole purpose of the gospel we are here to you know uh, try to bring people back to Christ to recounsel them you know back to God that's what the whole ministry means right so I'm in the woods right now, you know, I'm in a, a peaceful place and, um, you know, it's real windy out there. So I'm, I'm just, I found a little place in the woods sitting on this tree. That's why the phone is propped up the way it is. I'm just sitting on this log, but it's this tree. I, I think it's called like a mangrove tree or something like that, but I'm just sitting out here and, um, you know, hopefully the wind is not too strong. It's real windy outside of these woods, but where I'm at now. It seems like the trees is helping to um, protect us a little bit from the wind. So the title you see today, you might hear some boats go by and you might hear some animals and some birds or something like that. But um, it's just nature. Um, when you look at today and the wind is blowing and it's cold. So hopefully my nose don't start running. <laughs> you know, it's chilly. So um, by God's grace, he'll see me through. Um, when you look at today, and oh, well, before we get into that, so Satan is threatened by God's word. So that's why his job, see, one thing he knows is that, that the Bible says that 
the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, right? So that means that people that's not even born yet, but that's going to be born into this world, has to have the opportunity from God to know God's word, to know about him. The devil knows that. So before that opportunity presents that person, because it's, it's never, it could be when they're 20, when they're 8, when they're 30, when they're 40, 50. I mean, it used to be when the Bible were all different ages that came to God. So Satan knows that. So he'll be working on you, you know, from your, through your parents, through uncles, through cousins, you know, through entertainment, you know, in your mind, you know, um, you know, uh, giving you false dreams, making you think that you're going to be a prophet, making you think that, you know, you're an apostle, making you think that, you know, you're super spiritual and you're having all these visions, just like Muhammad had, you know, the, 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 the one who was the one that, um, you know, you know, came up with Islam. You know, he said Gabriel, the archangel appeared to him. We know nowhere in the Bible was Gabriel called the archangel. So we know the devil is what appeared to him. And the word of God says that Satan comes as an angel of light. So what I'm saying is, is that Satan knows because of the word and God's word can't lie that there are people. That's why they talk about generational, right? And it's passed down certain, you know, ghetto mentalities, certain mind frame, hustler mentalities, entrepreneur, you know, lustful. You know, you always had them uncles that like the young women or never really got married. That strong spirit of lust being in the family, strong spirit of gluttony, bad eyesight, you know, not that much grace over the eyesight, heart problems, not that much grace over people's heart. So Satan knows these things. So before that opportunity is presented, most people, right, most people, unless God prevents them, certain people, they won't experience being deceived by the devil, right? But many people will. And a lot of them are going to have dreams. They're going to have, because everyone who don't have the Holy Ghost has a demon in them. That's just reality. Okay? They have a spirit in them. So these demons have jobs and they have you know strategies that they work and they do a lot of different things so he knows that he has to work on people because he wants to build this this portfolio he wants to build this track record with you he wants to build this reputation he wants to build you up so when the word comes to you the truth of the word being spoken by a true servant of god right you will fight against it you won't truly receive it because you spent so much time with the devil portraying to be God or whatever, you know, you, you're, 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 you're thinking, you know, is revealing these things to you. So when the truth is presented, it won't be received because you have found so much pleasure, right? You have found so much comfort and false reality and falsehood and false Christianity. So that's why he does that. That's why you see so many false churches and, you know, false Christians and, you know, these guys, wearing Balenciaga suits, they asking you to give them money the same way drug dealers do, the same way scam artists do. It's the same people. So Satan does that. Look at this big old branch. Satan does that. Um, you know, so when the truth is presented, it'll be a war between right and wrong, good and evil, the righteous, unrighteous, true Christians, false Christians. That's why he does that. So people can choose sides, right? And God allows it because the word says how things should be, what things are supposed to be, right? It instructs us, it directs us, and it guides us. So if you allow the devil to deceive you, that means that's what you chose. That's what you wanted. So your, your allegiance is not to God, but to the devil. So it doesn't matter. That's just like when we were in the world. When I was in the world, I was a gang leader. I did all these different type of things, right? I was ignorant. But the opportunity came to me. And I was able to hear the truth of the gospel. So my eyes was open that fornication was wrong. Lust was wrong. Anxiety was wrong. Pride was wrong. Anger was wrong. So that's how faith, that's how I received faith. I mean, that's how, um, you know, my faith increased because faith comes by hearing. And it made sense. I'm like, well, in my life, I was doing this. In my life, I was doing that. This is what happened from those, you know, this is the result of those things, you know. So I said, hey, you know. I never heard words like these before that solves every problem that's going on in the world today. I was like, everybody should read the Bible. It says, love your neighbor, forgive. I'm like, we don't, I didn't grow up doing that stuff. If somebody hits you, hit them back. You know, if, if someone disrespects you, you know, 
take them through up through there, you know, just different stuff. So I never, excuse me, I never, you know, heard such beautiful words in my life. Like I heard in the four gospels, I heard in the New Testament. So it was like a breath of fresh air. You know, I used to always be like, what's my purpose? Like, why am I here? You know, I always contemplated with suicidal thoughts, depression, everything, you know, because Satan was working on me. So I wouldn't get to where I'm at today in the Lord. Right. So the point that I'm trying to make is that everybody has lived in sin. Everybody has partaked in sin. Everybody, you know, has allowed at at, in their life or even now they don't have the spirit Satan to use them as a puppet on the string everybody probably got some wild pigs out here but everybody you know has been used by the devil some kind of way you know especially um, talking about if, if you're born again of course not if you're a true believer we're not talking about Satan using he can't touch you First John 5 and 18 you know, we don't argue and debate what unbelievers say and what false Christians say. We don't debate, you know, like, for instance, I got this tree hurt my bottom a little bit. Let me slide down. For instance, like, people don't know it. And that's how deceived they are. And I'm going to do a teaching on this by the grace of God. But if you look at what false Christians believe in and what they talk about, Right? They're always talking as if the Bible is like if one verse like answers every question. If one verse just tells you everything. It's not written that way. It's not written that way. Like, for instance, it says if a man believed that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Right? Right? Confess with his mouth. Jesus is Lord, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Many different places, right? It says some of the similar things. So you're thinking that that's all, like, just think about it. It's in the book of Romans. They're thinking that, that because that verse says that, that everything else is omitted when it comes to believing in God. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So you're looking at the verse where it says, well, it says right here that if I believe God raised him from the dead and I believe and I confess with my mouth. But he said that people, you know, he said many worship me with their mouths and with their lips do honor me. But have but they, they but they have removed their heart far from me, right? Their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. So nothing is done of faith. So it's clearly showing you that you can be delusional in thinking that you believe that he was raised from the dead. But if you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, then how come everyone that has died around you never prayed for them to come back to life? How come you never laid hands on them? You immediately call nine one one and start going to mercy room. What about your, your your mothers and your fathers that was in nursing homes? You ain't praying for them to come back to life when they stop breathing. You know, you tell them not to resuscitate them or try to bring them back. You don't even live like a person that believed that Jesus rose from the dead. You don't even have the faith to believe that. To believe that a, 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 a human being died and came back to life and you didn't been in funerals all your life and never seen nobody come back from the dead. And for you to believe that and for you to be walking around worrying about if it's not bottled water, you don't drink it. Right? Worrying about What's in food, not eating sugar, vegetarian, vegan, you know, they're putting hormones in meat, all this scary stuff, right? That the world worries about, not a believer. If you be risen with Christ, set your effects on things above, not on things on earth. We ain't worried about that. Remember, Paul talked about the vegetarians. He said, hey, if the brother wants to eat, it, let him eat it. But he said, him that's weak and think that he must eat, you know, so if you look at it, him that's weak in faith. So you got to look at it. The brother that wanted to eat that way was weak in faith. But Paul was saying, don't discourage him, right? Help him, right? And, and increase his faith so he can know the truth. But don't discourage him just because that's where he's at right now, currently, right? But he's saying that the brother was weak, right? So this is the reality that people don't see. So people will say they believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead, right? God raised from the dead. They'll take that verse in Romans and say, yeah, that's all you got to do. Then why did he say, if you love me, keep my commandments? Why does he say, why call me Lord and do things I say? Right? Why in Matthew 7, those men that came and said, Lord, Lord, you know, have we not? 
done these things in your name. He said, apart from me, um, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. So it's not just that simplistic. They wouldn't be giving us all these different books. But these false Christians think that they'll read one verse. And that one verse just sustains their whole life as far as being a believer. That everything else doesn't even matter. Because they found one, worth, one verse to fit the delusion. And now they can't be told anything. Oh no, right here it says, if I believe... With my, that Jesus raised, God raised Jesus from the dead, and I confess with my mouth, then I'll be saved. Okay. Then why did it say that many going to come and say, Lord, Lord? They're calling him Lord. The Bible say no man can say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. So how are these folks saying Lord when they, but they're going before him and they get cast into hell? Why did the Bible say having a form of guidance, but not the power thereof? Why did the Bible say being, uh, not to be a, a, a hearer of the word, but be a doer? Right? Be a doer of the word, not a hearer, only deceiving your own self. So deceiving means that you're in deceit. You're lying. Right? It's trickery. Why did it say in 2 Thessalonians that he'll give you a strong delusion? That you'll believe a lie. So to be delusional, that means that you're believing in something that's not true. So you can say that you believe he was raised from the dead. You can say that, oh, it said confess my mouth. But the other verses support a whole lifestyle of being a Christian. Right? So, watch this. So, when you look at, when you look at what the Word of God says, Romans 14 and 2 says this. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. You see that? Another who is weak eateth herbs. So the one who was weak in faith felt that you had to be a vegetarian. Read it. Romans 14 and 2. Okay? You got to read this, brothers and sisters. That's what I'm saying. Like, they can they can say, like, well, the Bible say we can eat anything. Right? If one chooses to eat vegetables, one chooses, yeah, that's true. But your decisions is based off of a lack of faith, right? God's not trying to discourage these people who, who is coming, you know, as babies who don't have the spirit yet, right? Trying to give them a chance to be able to grow, right? To be able to learn. He don't want you to be, oh, you eat vegetables? Man, you ain't got no faith. What's wrong with you? That's, 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 a, no, he don't want that to be like that. Right? But he's saying through his word that him that is weak only think that he can eat this. Read it for yourself. It's Romans 14. I'll read it for you. Look what it says in Romans 14 and 1. Him that is weak in faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. See? The word weak is in verse 1 and the word weak is in verse 2. And it means to be weak in faith. So you got all these people walking around saying I'm a vegetarian. Because of what? They're fearful of what uh, worldly people is saying about the food. We're not affected by what the world says. The world say don't preach. The world say, you know, this. The world says that. The world says Jesus doesn't exist. The world. So why are we believing in some things, right? That the world say, then other things you don't believe in what the world say. The world says Jesus Christ never came. The world says it's a white man religion. The world says a lot of things. How come you fight them too for nail on that? But then when the world says, oh yeah, you shouldn't eat uh, unless it's farm raised fish. I'd heard folks said that tilapia was fake fish. Like fake, like, like, it, like it's not a reality. Like it doesn't exist. How can something be fake? How can a tilapia be a fake fish? You see what I'm saying? It's the mind frame of the world. But listen, watch this. Verse 3. Let not him let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let him not and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth for God receives him. See? So you see, that's not the way it's supposed to go. You're not you're not supposed to discourage him. But they are supposed to know the truth. Right? Because the Bible called them weak, you know, for having that mind frame. Right? But if there's truly, if they're sincere and they're truly 
they'll come out of that place, right? Of knowing the truth. But beginning stages, they don't know any better. So we're not, we're not to discourage them, right? But then as they grow more and they spend more time with us and they, the Lord brings them around and they stay around, then they'll grow. And those things will be things of the past because now their faith is increased, not to be worried, right? Because if the Bible say that all animals should be received, then why would why are you not receiving it? That's the command. It says that all animals are to be received, right? All creatures are good and nothing to be, you know, uh, uh, shunned. So why are we not obeying the command from God? You see what I'm saying? So this is the problem that we have. Watch this. That one is blowing hard. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. If it be received with thanksgiving. You see that? And nothing to be refused. But you don't eat meat. So you're not obeying the commandments. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. But you're eating herbs only. Vegetables. So you see what I'm saying? So you'll look at that verse and say, okay, don't despise the person that eats that way. We're not despising you. Right? We don't want to seem like we're judging just because you don't. But you don't have, you don't have the spirit. There's no way a person that has the spirit and a person that's a genuine believer would be worried about eating meat and not eating meat. Because the reason that they're not eating meat is for reasons that, that, that the world gives you. There's nothing in the Bible that says that you couldn't eat meat. So if you're a believer of God, that means you believe his gospel. You believe his doctrine. You believe Jesus Christ, God, you believe his doctrine. You believe his word. Nowhere in his word tells you to behave the way you're behaving. Okay? So you see the difference between people that claim to be Christians and those who are, are who are true Christians, we're going to do what we're told, right? We're not talking about, oh, yeah, they, remember in the old says we didn't eat pork. He said every creature. This is what he's saying now. This is the gospel now, right? We're not preaching the law, we're preaching the gospel, okay? The law was done by force, so to speak. This is done through faith, the gospel, right? Now, so if it's telling you that every creature is good and nothing to be refused, right? Why are you refusing it if the, if the Bible says it's not to be refused? Who are you obeying? Man's voice. Because man is saying that they have these hormones in this chicken and in this steak and they're, they're, they're cloning chicken and all this stuff. Everything is designed to keep you from Jesus. That's all it's designed for. Right? As long as you can, you can have conspiracy theories, you won't believe in Christ. Your mind, your mind won't be on him. It'll be on everything else. Okay. So... The teaching for today, there's no such thing as having, as having, I put have, as having your own ministry. As a Christian, these sayings are not biblical. Okay? Let's talk about that briefly. And I'm going to get out of here. This tree is, uh, this tree is a little uh, rough on me. Everywhere you see today, people saying they got these ministries, right? But before we get into that. Let me take you into Corinthians chapter 12. Right? First Corinthians chapter 12. Okay? Now concerning spiritual gifts, Brechin, I, I would not have you ignorant. Okay? But by the Holy Ghost, now these are diversity of, of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are difference of ministrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man that profit widow. For to one is given by the Spirit of to one, to one is given by the Spirit of word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge, by the same spirit, another faith, by the same spirit, healings, uh, prophecy, miracles, discerning of spirits, diverse kind of tongues, interpretation of tongues. But all these work of that one in the self same spirit, divine to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, have many members, and all members of the body being many, uh, being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into the body, for the body. So you, you can read on. This is first Corinthians chapter 12. Nothing talks about no ministry. Okay? So if you're saying that I have a, a ministry of healing, that's not biblical. A prophetic ministry, right? A healing ministry, right? Fivefold ministry. Uh uh whatever it's not biblical 
Okay, so remember, judgment starts in the house of God first. So that's what's taking place here today. Okay, this is this is this is God rebuking and admonishing these false churches. And you'll say, well, why is God rebuking and admonishing false churches? Well, because they're still trying to claim what is right. They're they're, they're they have one percent of things that the Bible say as far as saying it's a church, saying that they're uh, pastors and apostles. So you can't so, think about it. You can't come and steal U.S. money and take the money somewhere else and don't think that you won't get punished. OK, it don't work that way. You can't come in this country, break some laws, you know, say you're a U.S. citizen and think that you want to face a, a, a judge. OK, it don't matter if you're from a different country. You can't come here and commit crimes. You can't come here and steal from people, rob people, take some things to people and and. And go back to your country and thinking that the FBI won't come for you. No, you can't do it. So you're going to face the same punishment whether you're a U.S. citizen, truthfully or not. You could be a foreigner. You're going to face the same punishment. You don't have to be a true Christian to get rebuked. You're claiming it. That's enough. You got a church that's, that's trying to portray being from the Bible. You're mocking God. It's a sin. So you will see the same rebuke whether you're false or not. That's what it's all about. Judge talking about the house of God. Okay? You're claiming it. The world don't know that you're not a true Christian. The world don't know that's not a true church. So the world has to see, you know, these false churches be dealt with and have to see the separation, right? They have to receive the rebuke. So the word ministry, let's first read first to show you how far people are in delusion and insanity and false doctrine. Watch this now. What matter of fact, those that are up here, what do y'all think ministry means? I'm, don't look it up now. I'm saying from your own mind. It ain't going to be biblical because there is no definition for, I mean, there's no uh, scripture in the Bible that someone had a ministry name after something that they thought of or they believed in or it was their goal or their vision. That's not biblical. There's no such thing as having your own ministry. There's no such thing as uh, a false church being called uh, this is this is you know word of life ministries or break every chain ministries that's not biblical it's weird because it's like saying like it's like saying like you're a church but you're like you have a different like I guess like you're 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 you're, you're unique or you're different you're you're peculiar that's why you're not just calling it a church you're saying a ministry like why you see what I'm saying? Like their mind frame of why they calling it ministry, it has to be to separate themselves from, I guess, other churches that's out here that 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 says you know uh, this is Tabernacle Church, you know. But it's the same thing because all these false churches they got multiple names that's attached to them though. Like a false church would be like, oh, my name is um, Lighthouse International, you know, Ministry or Church of God in Christ or you know. Uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church or Espicola or you know First Baptist Church of of Alabama like you know like they just think of stuff you know it's kind of like how people you know make up like rap names you know like most of rappers got fake names most singers and R&B they got fake names it's a world full of delusion you know you wonder why they can rap like that because it's delusional you know it's not even your real name so you're you 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 calling yourself a name that's not your true name. It's not your actual name, right? So it's fake. It's fabricated. Much of it is. There's only so much you can rap about crimes before you get arrested. So you got to put 99% of of false reality and imaginational stuff in those raps, right? Or rap about what's going on. But you're not living that though. You know, you get person, you get prosecuted, right? So if you make it up a fake name, then you know that. You're finding comfort in false realities. So you can think whatever you want to think. You ain't never seen them videos where people be out there, you know, like like doing pranks on people and then the people turn against them. Uh, 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 doing pranks and then when the people get mad about the prank, the prankster gets mad too. Because he was delusionally thinking that it was just funny and cool and to get views and not think and do wisdom with insanity, which is foolishness, that they was going to react and get mad. So then the prankster gets mad. You see? So it's the same thing. It's all delusion. So yeah, that's right. And titles. That's right. But because it's all designed by false Christianity. You got to always understand that. You got to always understand that. Right? Okay, another thing. Let me talk about this real quick. 
as the Lord just gave it to me. We look at these pastors, right? I, I, I got to do a teaching on this, more a more particular and more precise teaching, right? But I'm going to just speak on it, right? So I got to do a teaching on the false prophets and how false Christians are the same. That's one teaching by the grace of the Lord. And the other one is going to be, right, talking about how, you know, these people that, you know, portray to be Christians, right, how deceived they are, right, and how lost they are, right, and believing in what they want to believe. So when you look at the false Christians today, right, a lot, when you listen to these, these, these so-called pastors preach, watch on Sunday. It's always going to be about how somebody hurt you. It's always going to be about, and if everybody is true Christians, right? Why are they always getting hurt by the same? Why are they always getting hurt by people? Why is it always talking about God going to separate you? You're not supposed to be around people anyway. You're not supposed to be around false believers. You're not supposed to be around, you're not supposed to be un unequally old. So why are they always talking about, like I seen this, this one preacher, I screenshotted it. It's in this phone. I got Courtney phone in my hand. But he said, he said, if you stop calling me, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not basically going to lose no sleep. And he said, some of them people that, that, that's, that hate on me is, are, are like, he basically said like people are mad that he woke up. Like, where do they get this mentality from? Like, where, is it, where does it come from when the Bible say to love your neighbors, love your enemies, speak evil of no man, not even to be affected by that stuff? Them brothers never walked around talking about, yeah, they mad that I'm out here preaching Jerusalem or they hating on me. The only time you see them interacting with the people was when they was brought on trial or in jail and they still showed respect. Even when Paul was slapped in his face, you know, he said, the Lord will smite thee down, thou whitewash, right? And they said, does thou rob us the high priest? He said, I did not know that was the high priest because the word of God said not to speak evil to the rule of God's people. He was humbled. Even Stephen, he said, forgive them. Jesus said, forgive them. Them brothers never sat there and talked about who did them wrong. They never talked about that. They never preached to like, hey, brothers and sisters, it's going to be weird. People are going to be doing wrong to you and they're going to be doing evil. You know, God going to bless you, separate you, you know, take you from them haters. Like they talk, they worldly. I don't, y'all might don't understand it because y'all might be worldly too. But maybe you can understand it by me teaching it. Then it could be opened by the grace of God. Your eyes could be opened by the grace of God. Maybe you never seen it like that before. Maybe you feel that a false preacher is someone who wears Gucci suits or someone who, you know, acts for money. Okay. Maybe like you, maybe what you feel a false preacher is, 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 you know, you're not as sharp as you think you are of knowing that 99% are false. Okay. They have no power. You don't, don't go off of because they, they sound good when they preach. They're not preaching. They're only talking about what makes you feel good so you can come back next Sunday. That's all they do is speak words to lure you through the flesh, fiend words, make merchandise out of you, please your flesh so you come back next week. People are popular for how they make people feel in these false churches. That's what makes, I'm not going to say no names, but a lot of these so-called bishops, right, mega churches people, listen what they're saying. It's the way they put their words. It's the way they make you feel. It's the way they speak articulate. articulate. It's their intellect. It's the way they're able to come up with, you know, with catchy words and, you know, catchy, um, you know, fake preachings. That's what makes them popular. They have no power. They overweight. They got bad eyesight. You know, their wives are overweight. Like they're not the, 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 the model uh, human beings. They, they, they obese. They got bad eyesight. They got two left feet. They're not, the, they not, you know, athletic or like, what are they known for? What, what makes them different than another person that claims to be a Christian? What makes, they're not, they're not doing, they're not even being used by God in any way that will set them apart from the, their peers. Paul was an apostle. Peter was an apostle. Stephen and Philip, they, miracles were done through them. They were different. People gravitated in the Old Testament. Those men who had the anointing and had the spirit, it was the power when Saul, when before King Saul became King Saul, when his 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 father donkeys ran away, who they go to ask to, to to find out where the donkeys went? Samuel. They said we're gonna go to the seer because of the power. They respected him. When when they seen the prophets coming, they would always say, "Is it well? Is all well?" 
You know, because they knew that that person was going to speak, you know, from God. And it was going to come to pass. Remember when Elijah called the, he cursed them people. They was calling him that bald head, that bald head. Respect them. What happened? The she bears came out the wilderness and tore them men up and killed them. Like y'all don't know the Bible. They were feared and respected because of the power, the relationship, the true anointing that was on them. That's why people gravitated to them. These folks don't even take care of their health. They're not no ideal people to follow. You hang with them, you're going to gain 20 pounds. All these overweight gospel singers and gospel, uh, uh, gospel singers and these false preachers. Most of them are overweight. Most of them got problems with their children, their children being born, their twerking and stuff. Like these aren't people to, to look up to. What, what separates them? What makes them to be someone that's of, 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 of honor and praise? For what? These folks are just like everybody else. There's nothing different to even show to see that God has chose this person, that God has anointed him. God, the Bible said that it's not he who commanded himself as approved, but who the Lord commanded his approved. It was the power that showed people that God was with them. And people knew that that man of God could help them get closer to God. They didn't praise the man of God, but they knew that they were sent by God to help them. They knew that. They couldn't go on that mountain like Moses. Only God chose Moses to go up there and talk with him. They had to respect it. If they tried to go, the Bible said they had to be stoned or thrust through the heart. Right? They couldn't. So they had to wait for Moses to come down. Only Moses could speak to God. So they honored Moses. The ones who were grateful for him. They didn't worship him or praise him. But they knew that he was one that was sent from God to help them. That's how believe men of God are supposed to be looked at right with love respect as someone who god has chose that is truly walking with god a true man of god not somebody that can't even pull back from the table not somebody that got bad eyesight not somebody don't got enough discipline to stop eating big old belly hanging over your pants okay your wife is overweight you overweight like you know come on that's they can't even teach you how to have good health and they're going to teach you about Jesus. They're not well-rounded. Any man of God is going to be well-rounded. He's going to take care of himself. He's going to be in shape. You know, he's going to be healthy. He's going to have good eyesight. He's going to have all those different type of things to encourage others, truthfully, to strengthen their faith. You can't be walking around all overweight and obese and stuff like that. Like, no. That's people who don't love themselves, who don't have no balance, who don't got self-control, who don't got discipline. Men of God, we're not controlled by the flesh or by the world. So that means food is not our God. God is our God. So why would we overeat? We eat enough to sustain ourselves. Whenever you eat too much, you get tired. You ate too much. You should only eat enough. You should only eat, right? Your meals that you're supposed to eat throughout the day. And then when it comes to like snacks, right? If you haven't done anything to exert energy, you know, after you done ate breakfast and two hours or something go by, you don't need to eat. You haven't done it. You've been sitting down all day. Food is nourishment. You don't need to eat if you haven't done anything, especially if you're not burning the calories off. It doesn't make sense. So food is your God. It's your comfort zone. Just like pornography. Everything becomes your God. You up there preaching with bad eyesight. Why God can't give you good eyesight? If your lights cut off in the church right now and your glasses fly off, you're going to need somebody to lead you by hand, but you're trying to lead everybody else. But then when it comes time... When you get off the stage of pretending, you got to go to doctors. Your vision gets worse throughout the years. They got to readjust your prescription and everything. Come on now, brothers and sisters. Let's keep it real. That person ain't sent by God. You got too many problems, too many challenges. You still need to be prayed for. You still got to go through the process of being delivered and being healed. What the man say? I see men as trees. So God trying to show you, you ain't supposed to be content with no bad eyesight and trying to preach. You wonder why they don't preach about none of those things. They walk around with bad eyesight and they okay with that. Knowing who their God is. Knowing that their God gave an eagle eyesight that could see a roach on the ground from 100 feet in the sky. Why your eyesight bad? Didn't the Bible say ain't we, ain't, we, ain't we more than the birds? You can't go to God to give you good eyesight? You've been preaching for 30 years? You don't want to fast throughout your life? You've been preaching for 30 years and you don't want to fast to lose some of that weight? God ain't your God, brother. God ain't your God. You're false. You've been used by the wicked one. 
So come on, y'all, y'all worship these people, and you don't even know what an anointed person is, cause you grew up hearing anointed means to sound wise and to have wisdom and how big your church is or you know what type of degrees you got. That ain't anointed. Jesus Christ came out of thin air, so to speak. They ain't know where he came from. Talking about as as they thought, right? They were like, who who taught this man? He just they, in their mind, they're like, isn't this the carpenter's son? Like you know, they're like, how is this possible? But today, you got to go through seminar school, theology school, Bible college, get a degree, got the degree, you know, rise, your rank, rise through the ranks of churches before you get that type of status and, and, and recognition. Right? That's false. So the word ministry means the work or vacation of a minister of religion, purpose or job, right? Holy orders. Okay? So when you see people say ministry, this is my ministry, that's not biblical. Ministry mean that we was just given holy orders from Jesus to preach the gospel. Okay? A minister is one who attends the need of someone. Take care or look after. Let me give you Bible. Matthew 16 and 18. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against them. All through New Testament you see the church of God. Jesus is who? Jesus was who on earth? The visible, invisible God in the flesh. The church belongs to God. Okay? That's why you see Paul wrote to the church of God at Corinth, to the church of God in Acts, to the church of God, right? The church of God at Judea. That's Jerusalem. That's where it all started. Okay? Jesus is the, is the lion of Judah, right? Where did Paul say the church of God was at? There you go. So you see what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? That's the only name that was ever given to a church. That's the only name it was called because it belongs to God. If you're following the, the pistols and you're following God's commands and you're following instructions, then you would say, hey, every church that, was, that a letter was written to, it was addressed to the church of God. And it was spread all out through the, the world. And it was always to the church of God. You know what? My church can be called church of God. But see, if a person was truly sent by God, they wouldn't have to sit there and think what to call their church. Okay. Because God will order their steps. People's steps are not ordered by. Okay, and think about. Let me think. Of, let me tell you about this too. Look at when people are are saying they can speak in tongues, right? You see when they joke about it. Like just say a man say he can speak in tongues, right? He see a woman. He said, "Oh," he said, "Boy, I I almost started the the shaba daba 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 duper duper about that woman." Woo, you know. So he playing around. So he's speaking in tongues, saying what? Ungodly words? It's a joke? Y'all don't see people do that? Y'all never seen them false Christians do that? Like be playing with their tongues? Like y'all almost made me, you know, shovel up, but like, like joking and playing. It's a heavenly language. But they're speaking and what they, they're, they're, they're saying things in those false tongues that represents some worldly words. But it's not a worldly language to even play like that. Did y'all catch that? Yeah, y'all might don't don't worry, don't worry. We'll 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 get to that later. If somebody wants me to further interpret, I mean further explain, I'll give it give them to it. But if not, we're gonna just move on. That might have went over some heads, right? So anyway, but listen, the false Christians are always talking about how someone did you wrong, right? Why are you always done wrong by people? Who are you around, right? How are you around some people that's going to do you wrong? Who are the ones that surround that you're talking about? Because you, you're swearing by God that you're a Christian. you in church 24-7, right? Let you tell it. you there Sunday, Bible study Wednesday, require rehearsal Friday. Saturday, you you doing the food bank. So who are who are they, who is the pastor talking about? You see, he putting you against each other. Y'all don't even see it. Who else he talking about? you in church four days out of the week. And he telling you that the people that's around you, who is around you, that you're going through all this hell. Who is he talking about? So he so he so he knows that that you're hanging around unbelievers and it's unbelievers. But he don't ever say that, though. They never say it's the unbelievers. They never say that's Courtney phone. They say the, they never say the unbelievers that you're hanging around, who you shouldn't be around, you know, God gonna 
take away that circle. Like, that wouldn't make any sense either, though. Because you're not supposed to be around them, right? And then why would God take it away? So who are they talking about when they always... They, see, y'all don't want to... See, y'all don't want to agree with me because y'all love these people because they make you feel good, right? I don't love their wicked messages, right? It's evil. I love these people, but I don't love their wicked messages that's inspired by the devil, okay? That's the difference. I love all men, but not the evil that the men do. Those things are rebuking the spies. What I'm saying to you is that you look, I got screenshots in my phone where these so-called peace pastors are talking about, you know, if you don't call me, I'm not losing no sleep. What type of mentality is that? That's worldly. That's no compassion. They don't even talk about demons inspiring people to do what they do. They don't even talk about people need deliverance from the way the demons are using them. They don't even talk about, you know, people being unbelievers or ungodly. They just be like, yeah, you know, you ain't got to call my phone. Like, it's, it's just like the world. Like, y'all were once cool at a time in your life and you're claiming to be a Christian. And now all of a sudden you're not cool. So now you're like, yeah, you know, God going to remove them folks from around you. That's the same way the world is. Women, especially women. They'll be cool. The next thing you know, they're like, yeah, they jealous of me. They hating on me. It's the same thing. Them folks is not preaching messages. I'm telling you, that stuff is fake. They're not preaching. It's only to make you feel good because you're, go you're worldly and you're going through worldly things. They never say it's the false Christians that are doing it to you. They never say that. They never say, oh, you need to stop hanging around unbelievers. That's why you keep getting hurt. They talking about each other. Who else is he talking about? Man, go watch. I'm not going to say no names. Go watch their messages when they're talking about how people do you wrong. Who are they talking about? Because the same people. And what about these false Christians on Facebook? That's always talking about celebrities. Showing videos of them doing stuff. And they, they, they're they like, like, they're like narrating it. Why you don't make videos about your cousins and your uncles and your, and your, your sisters? Who's twerking? Who on Snapchat wearing booty shorts? You know, what about your brother that's doing this? Y'all don't, they, they, these so called Christian men that's on Facebook that got over 200 something followers and making all these videos, they don't never talk about their family or their loved ones, but they attack the celebrities. Y'all really can't see how Satan is doing all of this stuff. Y'all really can't see how it's designed to make people look at God in a bad light. Y'all really can't see how they, they make they paint the picture of Jesus Christ to be a white man with blue eyes. Y'all don't see all this stuff that they do. Jesus wasn't black or white. See, see, see for a minute, y'all, oh, look at Ronald. He 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 going to black. Nah, I'm showing you that he ain't black or white. Okay? But they do that to cause division and to try to water down that word. They can't water it down. That's why they make false Christianity to try to influence the world. They can't change the word, but they'll try to influence you through false preaching, misrepresentations of the word of God. But these preachers are always talking about who did them wrong. Okay? Who did them wrong? God's about to remove you from those people. They mad that you woke up this morning. Who are they talking about? If you've been in a church for 15, 20 years, who are they talking about? That, that, that God is going to remove out of your life. That they hating on you. They're jealous that you woke up. That they don't, they don't stop calling your phone. That's, that's a blessing to me. Who are they talking about? Because you're only supposed to be... I mean, because they get on you in these false churches for not for not having a church home. They misquote the Bible, misinterpret it. Oh, you ain't got no church home? So who are they talking about? Because they, they swear that you got to be in their churches. You got to have a church home. So who are they saying that, you know, you, you got to be... A, God going to separate you from? They hating on you. They jealous of you. Who are they talking about? Because these, these are your, your, your members. Pastors, preachers, who are you talking about? You know, you got to call it out. Because it don't make sense. So you're saying that it's normal to be a Christian and to face wrongdoing from other true Christians. That's not biblical. We got the same mind. We're true yoke fellows. See, but they're not true Christians. That's why they, they preach that way. A true Christian, you never seen Paul and Peter, James and them argue. You never see them people ever like talk about who's talking about somebody. 
They always wrote how they was on one accord in Jerusalem. Acts 13, Acts 15, they was all on one accord. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, there was never no division. There was never no fighting, no backbiting. There was never no world. There was never no messages. Oh, hey, Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians, uh, First Corinthians. Uh, I want to let y'all know that God about to take you away from them folks that's hating on you. God gonna make your circle so small it's gonna look like a dot. God gonna God about to you know take you from the people that's jealous of you. Don't be mad because they don't call your phone no more. That's God elevating you. God about to enlarge your territory. Don't be mad that they they, they jealous of you. They hate. Who are they talking about? Paul and them never wrote like that. They said love one another, love the brethren. They don't even talk that way. Every message is gonna be about what someone done to you, what you want done, what you want to see from God. Right in some fabricated story out the Bible, some fabricated scriptures. That's all it's going to be. I, I'm telling you. Show me another thing they preach about, right? And prosperity as well. Show me thing they preach about that I, that 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 I, I didn't touch on. It's all going to be about what someone done to you, how God going to bless you, give you what you want, right? Everything you're praying for, you about to see. Your blessings is near. Breakthrough is near, right? Um. God about to separate you, about to elevate you, you know, you're going to different level, different heights, all that stuff, right? It's never that, hey, look, this is the best life, you know, we love each other. They don't even talk like Christians, but y'all don't know because y'all don't know Christ. That's why nobody understands what I'm talking about. If you know the Bible, you will know that they never lived this way. The brothers never preached about who doing you wrong. They talked about facing persecution. Not nobody jealous because Christians don't je Christians are not jealous. They don't gossip. When you hear what they talk about today in these false churches, they talk about all the emotions and worldly behavior that goes on in the world before you become a Christian. Thank you, Tyrion. Let's keep it. Come on, man. I know somebody with me. I don't got. I don't get up here and tell no lie. I don't ask for no money. I don't got no PayPal, no GoFundMe, none of that type of stuff going on. I'm just giving you facts. I love God. Right? Everybody talk that talk about how they love God. But don't nobody wants to tell the truth of his word. I don't care how long you've been in false religion. As long as you still got air in your lungs and your heart's still beating, you got time to make it right. That's the reality. You can accept this truth that's in his word. Nobody care about how long you've been claiming to be a Christian and, and you, you didn't know all these things. This is why God is so good by making it known to you. Nobody, nobody want to hear all that. That's pride. Who cares? Oh, I didn't. Uh, I've been a part of this stuff. You, of course. Right? So this is why God's giving opportunity for people's eyes to be open. So you look at everything they preach about. It's all about what I just told you. But who are they talking about if everybody is true Christians? Why are they not rebuking that people are not? Why are they not rebuking the believers for not walking according to the gospel? Because they don't preach the gospel. Man, I wish I could see this screenshot. But if I do it, it's probably going to click off. Okay? It says... The guy was talking about how, how people don't call. Let me try something real quick. Okay, so when you look at what takes place, sermon, let me put this up real quick. Okay, so when you look at when you look at how like look at this on Google it says how to preach a dangerous sermon. Jesus Smackdown. Week two, do not awaken love. Okay. If you have the Holy Spirit, 
why are these things even up here on Google? Ten most effective ways to preach the gospel. If the Bible says that no man can come unless God draws him. If the Bible says that one plants and one wars, God give the increase. Why would they be trying to teach you how to do preachings? Why? If the Holy Spirit speaks through you. Look at, okay, I'm not going to name no names, but look at this, 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 this so-called preacher. Anxious for nothing is one of his teachings. Getting past the silence of God. In between fights. Protect your mind from stress. Good things come in small packages. You're not being buried. You're being planted. Stop living in limbo. Steady in the storm. The battle for your soul. How God influences. Okay. Recognizing God's answers. Where did you see. Where did you see. In the, in the New Testament. Where people preach these ways that they're talking about now. When surviving isn't safe. What is these people talking about? They're not preaching the word of God. They're, they're using things to please your flesh because you will never ever experience the true power of God in false Christianity. So they make these false teachings up to please your flesh. What are they talking about? We don't have anxiety or stress. The Bible said, right, he will keep us in perfect peace. Who mine is stayed on thee. Because I trusted in thee. The Bible said peace is past all understanding. Will, will keep us. Right? So what are you talking about anxiety and stress? What is stress? Stress is not even a biblical word. So what is stress? Okay? So what do they mean fighting in between? The Bible said no man that wharf, you know, that he doesn't wharf the things of the world. Right? But only sent to, to, um, to do things that, uh, for the one that, um, that sent him. To please the one that sent him. Right? No man entangle himself with the cares and effects of the world. So what are they talking about? You look at the titles, it shows you that they're unbelievers because they still have stress. They still got anxiety. They're still fighting demons and spirits. We got authority over demons. Luke 10 and 19. Right? I'm not going to do no teaching. Oh, you can't, you can't find one teaching on here since 2015 of me telling you about anxiety or me telling you about, I'm always telling you that you're not supposed to have those things. You're not supposed to be being attacked by demons. Not fighting with a demon. You saying you got the Holy Ghost? Why would you be fighting with a demon? But that's that's I, I didn't I didn't teach on those things though. But the point that I'm trying to make is that you look at what I just read, and this is a well-known, well, 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 well-known person that I just was reading the, the titles of it. All you gotta do is type in a person's sermons, and they call it on Google, they on YouTube, and that was all the titles for the sermons. Like none of that is biblical. We don't have anxiety. We're not fighting nothing. We're in peace. You never seen Paul and him like, yeah, you know, we gotta, you know, we gotta fight to why don't you believe? You know, things that help your faith, to, things that help you believe in God. Like you're not a believer, you don't believe in God. What what are you how do you been in church for 10 years and you're about to hear a preaching of how to increase your faith to believe in God? So what are you doing all this time? You didn't believe in God. So anyway, the word ministry means vocation of minister of religion. Okay. Jesus said it was his church. Matthew 6 and 18. Second Corinthians 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Let's see what Paul was talking about when he said, seeing that we have this ministry. Okay. Now the word ministry went, meant what, brothers and sisters? It meant the work or vocation of, minister, of a minister of religion. Okay. Okay. So when Paul said we have this ministry, well, what ministry, Paul? What was your ministry name? Was it Apostle Paul from Taurus ministry? Was it Saul, who name is now Paul ministry? Was it, you know, uh, I was the worst of the worst, but I received mercy? Was it was I was blinded on the road to make us, and now I see ministries? Was it, uh, you know, um, Jesus told me I can't kick, kick, kick against the pricks ministry? Uh, was it uh, 
persecuting, you know, the church ministry. Like what, what, what was the name of his ministry? If it was, if you can have ministries. Okay, let's read. Second Corinthians 1. Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Okay, no name attached to that. Ministry, but remember, ministry means, right, we have this job to go and preach the gospel. Okay, we have this duty. That's what the word ministry means. Okay, a job, holy orders. Okay, so he's saying now we, seeing that we have to go preach the gospel, seeing that we have this duty to bring the word of God to people, that just use, look at it like that, okay? So you know there's no such thing as having our own ministry, okay? Remember, the word ministry means what? The work or vacation of a minister of religion. So let's read that. And it means purpose, job, right? Duty, right? And a minister means to attend to someone. So let's read it like this. Therefore, seeing we have this job or this purpose as we have received mercy we faint not right because he said it, they didn't they received mercy to be able to even be preachers to even to, you know to be you know saved and rescued by jesus so but look what he says he explains what it is but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by manifestation of truth Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ, Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That's what ministry means. Okay? Let's read on. That's simple. Ministry means to preach the gospel to those who are lost. Right? By grace, it's possible. What I'm doing right now, I'm ministering the word. Okay? That's ministry. I'm preaching to God. I have orders to preach this word of God in season and out of season. We're going to see the same thing being told to Timothy and being told to another brother. Okay. The same instructions on what they're supposed to do, as Paul just said, for himself. Okay. It just means to preach the gospel. That's what ministry means. It don't mean uh, I have a ministry of healing, prophetic. That is not biblical. It's demonic. They told us it's going to be many in the last days going to depart from the faith. Right, giving he's seducing spirits and doctrine of the devil, you know, you know, hypocrisy and lies and everything. This is what we see today. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who have recounseled us to himself. By Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. The word, the word unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. So ministry is reconciliation. It's not you having a church name or having a certain uh, particular ministry. That you're trying to base off of what you believe is a spiritual gift. Okay? You don't have no prophetic ministry. Healing ministry. That's demonic. It's a false Christianity. That's false church. That's not what ministry means. Look what the word means before you build a whole church and take out a hundred thousand dollar loan that you had to pay back. And you having to beg these members to give you money every Sunday so you can pay it back. Look up the word first. Then you might be discouraged to even try to say this is my ministry. And go out to Africa and get kidnapped or something happens, you know, because you're not sent by God and God's not with you. Or you spend all your money and you're believing that you're living as a true Christian in delusion and you're doing all this false stuff. Look at the, what the word means first. Okay? If you look up the word ministry, how on earth, on this earth, would these people be saying they got ministries? When there's nothing in the New Testament that says anything about a ministry is going to be like this or like that, how they how they call it today. Okay. 
Now, Colossians 4 and 17. And say to Acripius, take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. Take heed which thou hast received in the Lord. Right? In the Lord. Okay? The gospel. The consolation. Many read the Bible as if it is a contradiction, as if verses in the Bible are at war with each other or set deliberately against each other. Such thought process is a lack of faith and evil. So people will, will see the word where Paul says, see, we have this ministry. And they'll look at that and they'll create whatever they want off of that one verse. Not knowing that you have to read the rest of the word. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can't just read one verse and base your, 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 your false belief off of that. You got to read it all, brothers and sisters. Okay? That's, that's the way it was written like that. Okay? Now, let's look at this. All scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect through the to all good works. Where is the instruction and doctrine for having a ministry? It just said that all scripture is inspired by God for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. And right, there's no instructions. No one had a name or no ministry in the New Testament because that's not what it meant. So you see, through delusion and insanity and falsehood, they can make up whatever, but you cannot erase the words in this Bible. Watch this. Let me show you instructions that was given to a church and how the instructions got obeyed and fulfilled and they was blessed because they did what the word of God say. Okay? There's no instructions in the Bible that tells you you're supposed to have a ministry name called this and called that. Paul, Peter, J none of them people have their, their own ministries. Right? It belongs to Jesus. Ministry means to, right, to do, to preach the gospel. Re re the ministry of reconciliation, Right? Bringing those back to God by preaching the gospel of God. That's what ministry means. There's no instructions. But we got instructions of, of getting married. We got instructions of a, of, of a virgin. We got instructions for widows. We got instructions for, for deacons. We got instructions for, for, for uh, bishops. We got instructions for elders. We got instructions for fasting. We got instructions for, you know, um, you know uh, studying. We got instructions for prophets. We got instructions for, you know, when you're speaking in tongues. We got many instructions. How come they left out what people today are calling ministries? Right? Because that's not what it means. They're delusional. Okay? Watch this. Is it, this is James 5. If, is, is any of you sick? Is any sick among you? Let them call the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Confess your faults once another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The first word for the righteous man availeth much. Okay? Now I said, if any of you sick, go to the elders of the church. Is, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Watch this. 1 Peter 5 and 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder. Okay? Acts 9. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This one was full of good works and alms deeds which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in the upper chamber, as for much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and disciples had heard that Peter, remember, the elder, was there, and they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter rose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him, weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her, he gave, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon of Tanner. You see that? They obeyed the instructions. James said, If any of you sick among you, let him call for the elders. Peter told you in first Peter chapter five that he was an elder. Tabitha died. In Acts 9, they sent for an elder and they received a miracle and a blessing because they obeyed instructions that was given to them. See?
When you obey instructions, it's fruitful. When you don't, look what happened today. Chaos. Ephesians 4. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. Right? Perfecting the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry. Right? Preaching the word of God. Right? Reconciliation. Watch what, watch what we say after this. For edifying the body of Christ. Till we all come in unity of the faith and of knowledge of our son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of fullness of Christ. No name for ministry is mentioned because ministry didn't mean what they call it today. 2 Corinthians 6. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Okay? That the gospel be not blamed. Okay? That the works of the gospel, the preaching, the teaching be not blamed. 2 Timothy 4. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus, who shall judge the quick and the dead, at his appearing in the kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, long in doctrine. For the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. But, at, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. See? But everything he told him was what he what he said earlier in Corinthians about the preaching, the teaching, rebuke, reproof. That's ministry. That's what he said, make full proof of thy ministry. Okay? Now we know what ministry means. Holy orders. Okay? Preaching the gospel. Acts 20 and 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life there unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. In the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Did y'all hear that? Let me read it again. So that I might finish my course. It's Acts 20, 24. So that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of God. That's what ministry means. Okay. First Corinthians chapter three. Who then is Paul? And who was Apollos, but ministers of whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God give the increase. And remember, ministry meant what? A minister meant what? Attend to the needs of someone. So minister, ministry, you see, it's all the same thing. So they have lied. All this stuff today saying you have a ministry. There's nowhere in the Bible where a person name was called this and this ministry. True Christians, we obey the instructions that was given to us. If it's not there, it's not of God. Okay, we don't just make up something. We don't just say, okay, I'm gonna call this leaf, I'm gonna call this leaf angel wings ministry, right? No, you're supposed to obey the instruction. That's why they write in all these epistles saying, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that. If this person do this, don't even eat with him. But many, many men claim to be a brother and is a fornicator, such a one don't even eat with. They wouldn't think about it, brothers and sisters. We have to obey. That's the only way we can be his people. By bands and shirts. We can't just claim him and then all of a sudden just be like, oh, we're going to just do what we want to do. That's not the way it works. Says such a good man in order by the Lord. We didn't know any better. So he came and preached the peace. He came and taught us how to live like people of his kingdom. How to live holy, righteously, and godly in his present world. That's the whole purpose. You can't get away from that by making up your own stuff. Okay? Love you all. God bless.